Hey, welcome to Rust Revival Garage. My name is Tim. Got a little project to take care of in this video. It's not car related, but it is something that I have to get taken care of before it starts getting way too dark outside and way too cold. So let's get to it. I built my neighbor's fence for him. We got a quote for somebody to come and do it for us. It was like something stupid, $2,500. So we had a windstorm come and take down most of ours. Um, this whole section here just completely fell over. And uh, I told my neighbor, hey, I'll build the fence for you if you pay for my fencing material. And it worked out well for both of us. Got this done and I built this fence a few weeks ago. So this one goes all the way to the neighbor's fence. But yeah, looks pretty good. Car repair stuff I'm not great at. Carpentry I'm doing pretty well. So in order to get this garage back here, I had to take down the old existing fence. And you know, it, it just wasn't gonna fit otherwise. So I had to cut off the posts and clear the way to make sure it could fit all the way back there. But I've got to get the fence built back up. I just have to make sure that I can get the truck back here. <laughs> the truck has to be able to back in and pick up an engine or pick up the hoist and bring it back to this garage. But whatever it is, I just need to make sure I can get a large enough vehicle back here. So my plan is dig the hole here and not worry about this hole. And then what I can do is attach a board Take out these fence boards, attach a 2x4 here, then I can attach the two 2x4s two across to the post, and then build my fence up over to this fence to give it a little structure. And then I'm going to have this hole, and I've got to dig this hole. And then that way I can come all the way across and have the fence in here with the boards. And then this will be my gate. So from the center of this hole to the center of this hole, a little bit over, uh, it's actually eight feet right on. And my truck from the mirror to that mirror is eight feet. So even if I'm a little under, I could always move the mirrors back, but just need to make sure that I'm able to get this truck back there. If I have to pick up anything, drop off anything, it's gotta be able to fit. Now you can do a post hole digger. A lot of people recommend that. Great way to just go straight down and get all your dirt out quickly and easily. But the way it works for me is I've got a, a shovel like this that just digs straight in. Got a regular shovel in order to get as much of it out as I possibly can. I've already got to start on this one. This one, got to start from scratch. So what's going in the hole? It's going to be the four by four post that's eight feet long which means we want to get our hole down 24 inches, so two feet, giving us six feet standing up. So this is what this is a pressure treated four by four. It's eight feet long and it's going to go down in here. When I drop it in now, it's only going down maybe a foot, foot and a half. So I've got to dig out more to make room. So yeah, right now we're lucky to be about 14, 15 inches. So we need to go down almost another 10 inches to get the depth that we need. Okay, we are 24 down. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit down in there. What you wanna do is line the bottom with rock. Just as many, just as many little pebbles as you can. Your post is gonna sit on the pebbles and that keeps it from, you know, the dirt from sitting there getting wet, soaking up into the post, weakening it. The, the little pebbles will give it something to sit on, keep it from settling, and also give it a little aeration so that water can drain away from it. So here are my rocks and just need to give me a nice flat square base down there. I'm going to dig it all out. 
long as I don't keep putting more in. My base is down there and we're good to go to start setting up the post. Now what I like to do is take just regular old 2x4s and drill in some extra long screws long enough that it goes through the 2x4 and into the post. Then I will use these to stagger it. So one on one side going this way, one on one side going this way. So that I can sort of hold it in place, hold it as level as I can while I'm putting the concrete down in. All right, it does not have to be straight here. As you can see, it's not level, but that's okay. We just want it to hold it up for now. So what we're gonna do is fill in with the concrete, then start to get it level. And you can put in your second screw once you've got it level. So right now I've just got one in on the top that I can swivel and set in the ground once I know I'm good and level. But let's just check and see how far off we are. See right there, we're fairly on. We're fairly on there. So it's not perfectly set, but there's nothing that's gonna hold it here until we get our concrete in. Um, because, you know, it can move around, but once you get the concrete in, it's gonna hold it a lot firmer because it does set up fairly fast. I like to do one bag of the quickcrete per post. Fill it all the way down in. I'll even sprinkle a little bit of water down in there so that the water can soak up. And you don't need a whole ton of water per bag. This is just a little bit that I put in the bucket and that I'll pour over the mix once I've got it all down in there. But first, let's give it a little splash. Actually, I forgot to do one thing. It's a little trick that I really like to use when setting up your post, I gotta take this post back out. What I do, I put in some galvanized screws all the way around. The screws give something for the concrete to bite into. So yeah, it looks like a little bit of a medieval torture device, but Again, this is going to go down in the concrete. The concrete's going to surf surround all of these, give it almost something to help kind of hang on tight. If it's just straight smooth wood, you may not get a good grip on the, with the concrete. Okay, got it back in. We are level again, and time for the uh, quick crete. No, you can't just pour your water in there. Um, in fact, I think I may use two. Yeah, I am. But you can't just pour your water in immediately. You've got to take your shovel, take a stick, go down in there and get as much of the air out as you possibly can. You can just feel it drop. When it stops dropping real easy, then you know you've got a good foundation. Like right now, it's hard. First couple that I did, it just dropped almost straight down. We're gonna do the same thing once we add the water too, of course, to get the water down in there. But yeah, let me get a second bag on this. Looks like I'm going back to the hardware store for more quick read. This one I wanna be, have it be really strong because this is my gate, the holder of the gate. And then again, watch how easy it drops down in. And then it just only goes in a little bit. That's when you know, you know you've got it nice and settled. But two and a half bags later, I've got enough on there. Um, let's check our level. All right, so we're dead on there. And we're level there. There we go. Nice and level, ready to pour some water. Mm -hmm. 
check for level again got my second screw in and we should be good to go just gotta dig the other hole other post and then that one so fun times okay got the other two in took uh two bags each but yeah the other thing you want to do is make sure you add in your dirt around there again kind of keeps everything in there nice and solid so return all your dirt and uh, we just have to wait for this to set up it's quick quick setting but before you can put any weight on it you gotta wait four hours next day our posts are nice and strong next thing we have to do is two beams across two beams across then we can start doing our fence panels when you're out here all by yourself this is your best buddy um, because you've got to get that board up and across so what I do is I do it just below where I want it to be put one uh, screw in and hold it then I can put my other beam up put in one screw and then that allows me to then go down love make sure it's level and then put the other screw in down there you can kind of see where the two by fours are on this other side of the fence so i'm going to roughly do them about the same spot at least this top one now if i look at it it's pretty much right in here so i'm going to have my two by four here about here and then i'll know i can put it right about here as well and go straight across Again, it doesn't have to be in the perfect spot. You're just trying to hold up your board so you can get one screw in it. So I've got the one side in, I'm flush with the post. Got the one side in, that still allows me to go up and down and make sure it's level. Another thing you want to make sure you do is stagger your bolts. If you put them one above the other, it has a chance of working its way out, but when you stagger them, Instead of being straight up on top, you stagger. Helps hold it much better to the board. Now in my case, I could have gone all the way to the edge. Maybe give it a little bit stronger of a structure. I just didn't want to, this siding is pretty new. I did not want to get too close knowing myself. I'd probably hit it in some way. So I did come all the way out a little bit. But what I can do is run my 2x4 out to here. That way I can still put my fence panels along here and it looks pretty much as it should and we'll be good to go now we just need to make sure we can line it up to this post over here now what i was going to do was take away these fence panels because it already exists i thought i could just take it out but what i think i'll do because then it prevents me from having to cut it to line it up what i'm going to do is put a two by four all along here and then what i can do is my two by fours that come across i'll be able to screw in all the way down and that will hold it nice and tight i'll still be into this two by four this fence post and then i'll just be going into the two by fours that are running across not sure if i mentioned it or not but make sure you're getting pressure treated lumber uh, they have pretty much at any lowe's home depots menards wherever you might shop get the pressure treated stuff because it's going to last longer it's not perfect it still can rot out and after a while it's the damage can still be done but i'm going to show you some tips at the end to make sure that it lasts even longer but always get the pressure treated stuff even the two by fours usually they have four by fours and four by sixes uh, and then they have two by fours that are also pressure treated very very close to these fence panels as well another thing while i'm thinking about it whichever side that you're going to be putting your fence panels on Make that the crappiest looking side. If you've got a side that looks better, you know, like for example, this one doesn't have a ton of knots, that one's gonna be facing the inside. So, you know, make sure it's 
a good looking board on this side because you're gonna have fence panels all along here and you just want this to look a little bit better when you're in your own backyard I guess okay we've got a good strong fence structure now and really it's just a matter of putting on our fence panels but let's get this side done okay so those were perfectly eight feet these I'm gonna actually have to cut down so I do need to get some measurements but first let's get that two by four into this side of the fence okay to do this it's a very good idea to have a miter saw the kind that will either pull out and cut or I've got this older one that just comes down and cuts now the other thing to keep in mind that most people I do not think think about this sometimes if you've got a measurement say you want to cut it exactly 62 inches you want to cut it to 62 and a quarter there's a reason why because of the thickness of the blade this is a quarter inch so if you're at 62 just go maybe an eighth to a quarter over then you'll have a perfectly cut 2x4 that's 62 for example even though this 2x4 is pressure treated i'm not going to put it on the ground uh, I cut it so that it's going to be long enough to cover all three of the 2x4s that are on the other side of this fence but i'm not going to set it all the way on the ground better chance of, of water getting wicked up into that and so gave myself a little bit of room at the bottom and you're not going to see it because it's going to be on the other side of the fence um, so yeah okay gonna make sure that that is level two If you want to make sure these line up with this do not measure from the bottom because the ground is not level so in this case from the bottom of this is 34 and a half down to the top of that so I will go from the bottom of this down 34 and a half put that bottom beam on okay this side is ready for the fence planks and so is this side ah, fill in a hole so now our fence boards um, this actually has a slope so you want to measure out your longest one and say, okay, this will be my full six foot fence post. That way we can keep it straight all the way across. Don't start at the longest one and then do six feet because it will then come down, your line will come downhill if you want to keep your line the same all the way across. So find your deepest point and then measure that and then you'll have to start cutting boards as you move up the hill again you want to stagger your bolts uh, good idea to sort of get them started and um, have them where you want to be and then we can check to make sure it's level if you get this one level hopefully the rest will be level I would normally like to start out here but um, and go in but I just kind of want to make sure that this one is fairly close to the original fence that's here. I kind of didn't show the next part because what I wanted to do was make sure I have this spaced out so that I don't have to cut this board. I hate the look of them when they're cut. So I spaced it a little more than I normally would but managed to get them all to fit. Uh, but here's kind of what I'll do. I will put the board up and say, okay, how much does this need to come down to be level? And just kind of eyeball it. And I know I'm taking about three quarters of an inch off of this one. Uh, I'm pretty down secure in the ground. Um, but I can see that I can take that much off. And this should then be level. And that side of the fence is done again. Got them staggered. But I try to keep it consistent. And we're good to go on that side. Now the problem is getting the height of this one over to here so I think I may have to try the little string trick okay I cut a board that I wasn't crazy about with just a sort of an eyeball guesstimate 
Ran a line level across. All right, so I'm pretty much level there and there. And that's only if I'm right here. So I pretty much need to come down another inch. Another inch, and I should be level all the way across with this. I've got my board cut to the correct height. We're pretty much on target. I only put one in. Now what I'm gonna do is check for uh, level on this one because even though the post might have seemed level, I'm gonna make sure that this is level. And you screw it on based on that. If I'm over sticking over down here, then I'll move this one over a little bit. But I wanna just make sure that this is perfectly straight and level. Now here's my sort of spacing bolt. I know that this one is straight up and down. And then I'll put this in here and put this down here to make sure the gap is the same on each one. And so they should all stay pretty much straight up and down. And I'll check every once in a while. So on down the line. Slowly making progress, just checked again for level, it's still level. So it does work, you don't have to test it each time. But, and then the, uh, the boards are pretty much consistently spaced. You're not building something absolutely perfect, it doesn't have to be dead on. But what I do is I just measure each board. I get up here and I say, okay, how far, how far down from this top point to that top point am I? And then I cut off the bottom, that, that distance. So like right now, I'm at about seven inches and uh, up from the six foot board, cut seven off, and it usually lines up pretty well. And just like that, the fence is done. Had to cheat a little bit at the end here. Got a little, got my gap a little bit farther in, but it fits. Like I said, I don't, I'm not a big fan of cutting it and just sort of having it hang there, but I can live with it. Nice and straight. Feel like I'm pretty close on. Now the hard part, the gate. With the gate, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Bought a kit on Amazon um, that it actually can't, allowed me to make two different gates, so the same hardware. And what you're doing is making a four by, or a two by four frame that's the exact width of your gate. You can make a traditional gate. You can do the 2x4, 2x4, and then have the, the 45 degree bar that comes down and supports it, and then put the hinges on it. I like this one a little bit better because it has the hinges and it has a frame that surrounds the 2x4. So you can build it up build it across it's going to hold it a little bit better i'll give you the link for this down in the description but this is what i'm going to use to make my gate number one on the left side gate number two on the right side and that'll give me two four foot gates i was going to do one eight foot gate but i just don't have the structural soundness i would need to support that much weight anyway um yeah so let's get to cutting. If you do decide that you don't want to go with the kit and you want to make your own gate, uh, what you want to do is make sure that, this is a gate that I've made for my neighbor. Yeah, you can you can make it with a two by four, another two by four, and then you want to make your Z, which comes down here. And where do you place this? This is always going to be at the base of the pole that's holding onto the hinges. So if it opens out this way, you want the Z to come down here. If you had it on this side, then you would want that Z bar to come straight down to this corner. And then that way when it opens, it's supporting the weight and the weight is pushing down on the side that's opening. So this side of the post has the weight. Therefore, all the weight is being held up by this bar pushing down towards the bottom of the post. Make sure that you're doing it, that that Z-bar is 45 degrees at an angle. If it's not 45, if it's 48 or, or 43, 
it's not going to support it as well. So what I like to do is cut the the 2x4, I put my miter saw at 45 exactly, cut it, and then I make it fit. So if it doesn't come all the way to the corner, that's okay. You still want to get most of the weight down at the bottom and then support it into the post. Um, if you have two gates, like for a really long gate, you can do two Z-bars. But make sure that they're both at 45 degrees. When you're making the gate, you've got to make sure that it lines up with the 2x4s that are on the back. So I measured the distance between the two posts for the gates. I'm going to make two different gates, split them in half. And so the top measurement, 99, bottom 99 and a half. Not sure why it's off. It could just be the fact that the posts weren't perfectly level. Um, or that the post maybe had a bend to them, I don't know. But the instructions for the gate kit say to measure your top and your bottom and subtract one and then cut those two two by fours. So we need one that's 48 and a half and we need one that's 48 and uh, three quarters. Got my two horizontal boards for both gates cut. And now we just need to figure out how tall we want it to be. So the vertical boards. It's a good idea to match up then your gate boards with the two by fours that are here. So think of this as the horizontal. We just need to know the distance between here and the top of that one, which I believe was 34 inches, but let me verify. And then we'll cut all four of the 34s. So I was a little bit off. It's 34 and a half, no, 34 and a quarter, 34 and a half. Um, so yeah, we'll just do sort of right in that same range of maybe 34 and a half. Okay, so I've got my four 34 and a half verticals. And there we go. I'm not going to show you both gates. I'm just going to make one and then I'll repeat the same process on the other side. But these are my two vertical, two horizontal pieces. And now I just need to use the gate brackets. It's also a good idea to think about which way your gate's going to go. In my case, I want to swing out here. So the gate will swing out. And so my brackets, before you start building, you want to make sure you've got it all correct. So my brackets will be in here. And the gate will swing out. Now what I'm going to have to do is remove this first board that gives me access to drill in the brackets. And what I think I might do is put another 2x4 right along here, right along here. That way when I've got the bracket out it's going to be level with the fence so that the fence will be the same. The planks on the gate will be the same as these planks here because it's got this 2x4 cushion. So I'm just going to do a couple more 34 and a halfs, take these off, these first ones off, and then that way I've got good filler and then I can attach the brackets to those. Okay, you gotta love a kit that you get that's supposed to have two different size screws. One, one's longer ones to hold into the gate or into the fence post and then these are to attach these but they're all the same size and they suck I literally just tried to screw one in head snapped off now granted I was using an impact but I wasn't killing it I just drove it down pop went right off genius so I'm using my screws So I've got these two in, basically holding this corner. I'm going to put these two in, hold this corner, and then I will attach the outside ones. And then what I can do is that'll pretty much get me centered enough that I can then add these. Uh, because this is important, because trying to do this without that holding it, it's going to try to push it away when you're installing this. So once I've got these in, I'll have that problem down there where I don't have 
these, but I'll make it work. Okay, so I've got the structure of my gate built and everything should be good to go. Just have to go out now and hang it up. So my gate's out here and I just need to get something to hold it up to about this level. Um, because you, unless you've got somebody to help you, but I'm basically going to be lining up this board with this board right here. Okay, I managed to get it held up with the box and a 2x4 and a couple of other things. It's not easy, but I got it started. go so our gate is up it's fairly level it's not moving on its own sometimes if you don't get them just right they'll just sort of swing out on their own and this one is pretty much stopping wherever I let it go so we're good to go there but yeah all we have to do now is get our other gate built and put that up and then we do our fence boards is perfect right there. It doesn't have to be dead on this one for a look close. Yeah. So come back out this yeah that gives me the center hole. Uh, the best part is though the bolts oh that's fucking cutting. <laughs> the bolts the screws that came with them uh -huh. snapped the head off for the very first time. <laughs> you just kind of have to throw them away. Yeah. If you don't get it dead on, mm -hmm. it pulls on it. So the next sort of yeah, those things are rubbish together. too. So there is my second gate. Yeah, I just need to put my one fence post up, put the rest of them on, and we should be good. A little bit of a gap here. Um, but again, won't be able to see it from the outside. I'll just be cursed by seeing it on the inside that they are not perfectly straight. But that's okay. It does close. And everything is good. So there we go, this side of the gate is done. Looking pretty good. And the spacing, like I said, spacing is a little greater here, here, and here than it does on the rest. But overall, you can't really see it. And the height is pretty good. And I had to shift a little bit of dirt around. But it does open up all the way. Doesn't really catch. Okay, so I've got the next gate started. <clears throat> We're pretty much level up here. And remember how we had that gap in the actual 2x4s? Now the gap is gone. And all we're doing is, this is straight up and down. But we're just coming out a little bit from the 2x4. You see here it's, it's barely, it's practically flush. So we've eliminated the gap that would be visible from the outside. And we are done. And there we go. Okay, time to put on our latch. And really it just consists of a little bar and then this that comes around the bar. You want to put the bar on first. Get it where you need it to be. I guess I can get rid of that. Get it where you need it to be. And then match up the other side of the gate. And then attach the other uh, latch when it's 
pretty much lined up dead center. So I'll go ahead and put this one on with the crappy screws that they provided me with the kit. So our bar is on pretty level, not too far up that somebody can't reach it, but I like to put it up high enough that maybe a little kid can't reach it just in case. Um, but yeah, and then you also don't want to go too far because you want to be able to either reach down and reach it from the other side, or there's a little rope that came with it. I can kind of show you that after we get it set up. So I don't have it attached yet, but I, like I said, I kind of want to make sure I'm getting it right in the middle so that when it comes in, it's catching it and that it's, I might, might probably put it a little bit higher than this so that again, can, it can just pretty much go in and catch on there and lock tight. Okay, so we've got our latch in and it locks up tight. So I had to double up the strings from the two different kits, but yeah, you just now hang this over the side. You can pull on it and it opens you up. Now I said I was gonna show you something, um, nothing too dramatic, uh, not a major discovery, but did wanna show you something that you wanna to do to make sure that you're giving your pressure treated wood an even longer life. What I like to use is the Thompson's water seal. Uh, you put a little bit in a bucket and you want to at least, you don't have to do the entire fence, but you want to do all of the top portions of your fence. So the top of your post, you want to make sure that you get the Thompson's water seal all along here and the tops, even these little edges, these corners. You want to make sure that the, the Thompson's water seal seals everything in on the top. And even though it's already pressure treated, this has been cut at some point, and I, you just never know if they did it before or after, but I always like to treat it because water's always falling down here. It sits there, starts to sink in, and it splits the wood. And I've seen it split so many of these older pieces of wood, the water just pools right here up on the top. And so just use the Thompson's water seal. You can get a tiny can if you've only got a small fence. I've had that can forever. Um, but yeah, I've done the, the tops of the fences and the tops of the posts. Uh, sometimes we'll even do the tops of the two by fours. Again, just because water is sitting here. And we just wanna make sure that this lasts as long as we can because you don't wanna do it again. If you don't want it to affect the look of your fence and your post, make sure you don't let it go running down the sides because it will actually sort of treat it basically. But yeah, get a good, nice coat on there. Don't do anything. If you're gonna see if you're planning on putting caps on this, don't put the caps on until at least 48 hours after you've had this, you know, given this time to dry and seal up. Not rocket science, not supposed to be perfect, but it is done. So that's going to do it. I know it's not the normal car channel stuff, but I'll be back to that in the next video. Uh, hopefully this does help somebody out. If you've got to build a fence and a gate, maybe for your backyard or around your garage, whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, like it if you got anything out of the video, I'd appreciate it. Um, leave me a comment down below if I got anything wrong or if you have any questions. And subscribe if you can. That'd be really cool. And thank you very much for tuning in. We will catch you next time.